that make a great chess player. Knowledge and ability to calculate quickly are important, but those skills are not enough. The great players have something that turns chess into art. What does it take to defeat the world champion? This question will be answered this November when Magnus Carlsen, the reigning champion, will defend his title in a match in New York City. Who will be his opponent? It will be decided in Moscow. The tournament will be a competition among the best of the best. The event will take place at the historic Central Telegraph Building, just a stone's throw from the Kremlin, where eight superheroes of the chess world will battle it out. At 21 years old, Anish Giri of the Netherlands is the youngest participant in the candidates tournament. Despite his youth, he has a singular distinction. He is the only one who has never lost to Magnus Carlsen. There's also Fabiano Caruana of the United States. Sergei Karyakin of Russia. He holds the record as the youngest grandmaster in history. The second American in the tournament is Hikaru Nakamura. He's capable of brilliant attacks, which makes him a constant threat. Levon Aronian of Armenia. He may have the most pure talent of anyone in the candidates. When maneuvering is crucial, he's without peer. Peter Svidler, the second Russian in the candidates, has won the Russian championship seven times. He's always dangerous. Veselin Tapalov of Bulgaria is a former FIDE world champion. He's an uncompromising player who will attack if he sees an opening. Vishwanathan Anand of India is the oldest player in the tournament, but he has lost little of his vigor. He was the undisputed champion for six years. March the 10th, 2016, Pashkov House, downtown Moscow, was the site of the gala opening ceremony. Elegant guests, including the president of Armenia and high-ranking Russian government officials, mingled and played chess into the evening. been on the sideline of uh, sport business for a long time. Now things changed, not only because of uh, us or because of uh, Magnus Carlsen, who's a huge star, but also because the world changed. It's the world's uh, biggest computer game. Now. Apart from a chance to play the match of a lifetime against Magnus Carlsen, the winner will receive a prize of 95,000 euros. The player with the worst result will still earn 17,000 euros. and the candidates have competed all over the world in many different venues, from concert halls to libraries, from banks to museums and even in the Kremlin. They adapt easily. Now it's the Central Telegraph. I asked uh, how we can organize uh, these candidates' uh, tournament here in Telegraph because this is old uh, building and uh, this building they need to uh, repair uh, reconstruction. But if, uh, they said to me, Mr. President, you will see it will be. High profile guests will watch the tournament from a VIP lounge. Regular fans will occupy the biggest space, with each move displayed on large screens in real time. A press center for journalists from around the world will be nearby. 
Armenian president Serge Sargsyan makes the first move, d2 to d4, for Anishgiri, who is playing against the president's compatriot, Levon Aronian. Vichy Anand, the 46-year-old ex-world champion, will be playing against Veselin Tapalov, who will mark his 41st birthday during the tournament. Six years ago, Tapalov played a match with Anand for the championship but lost. despises draws and has in the past had some unusual help to train and prepare. He worked with a computer that has been designed for the Bulgarian defense industry. In 2015, Topalov defeated Carlson not once but twice. Though he has sometimes hinted at retirement, he doesn't seem ready to cede his place among the elite just yet. Of course, it's better to be number two than number nine or ten. But uh, I've been number one for quite, quite long, and so it's not really like something that bothers me. Checkmate. Vichy Anand has confirmed that he's still one of the strongest players in the world by defeating Tapalov in round one. Anand was world champion until 2013, when he lost to Carlson, the winner of that year's Candidates Tournament. Anand came back to win the Candidates Tournament the following year, thus becoming the first challenger for Carlson. Anand is the most experienced grandmaster in this year's competition. The first day has ended, and Anand is leading after the remaining three games ended in draws. second round, all but one game ends in a draw. Draws are not uncommon in tournaments at this level because of the knowledge and skill of all the players. There is one decisive result as Sergei Karyakin of Russia beats the American Hikaru Nakamura. Perhaps this is the first step by Karyakin towards winning the tournament. Or is it just a lucky game? I'm quite stable psychologically. I've won many games in my life, but that doesn't matter now. In round three, Levon Aronian beats Veselin Tapalov. The Bulgarian grandmaster isn't in good playing shape, as shown by his second loss in three games. Anand, Karyakin and Aronian now lead the race. Watching the battles at the candidates' tournament, it's clear that the world champion Magnus Carlsen and his team are closely watching each game, trying to guess who they will face in New York. Oh, um, I'm sure he's following it. I mean, every round, every day. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I don't think he's following it because he's he's thinking about who he's going to play next. But I think just uh, as as a chess player, more than anything. I think. Uh... I think it probably interests him uh, quite a bit who he's going to be playing later this year. I'm not sure he's losing much sleep about this, but uh, everybody's watching. I'm absolutely certain that, you know, anyone remotely interested in chess is watching in some capacity. On the fourth day, two of the three favorites, Sergei Karyakin and Vichy Anand, clash at the chessboard. When they met for the first time some 10 years ago, Sergei was 16 and Vichy was 36. Karyakin has never defeated the Indian Grandmaster before. Today, after a 10-year wait, victory finally comes for Karyakin. Now he's leading the race. Karyakin is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the youngest grandmaster in history. 
After losing to Anand in the final match of the 2014 candidates, Karyakin declared that he was no longer satisfied with second place. Of course, I understand my opponents are very strong. However, I hope to show everyone what I'm capable of doing. I've been preparing for this tournament for a very long time, and I hope I'll succeed. After losing to Sergei Karyakin, Anand bounces back by crushing Peter Sviedler in just 24 moves. Peter Svidler. He has won the Russian Championship seven times. Svidler has represented Russia at the Chess Olympiad ten times. Though clearly a talented and accomplished player, he's regarded as the dark horse of this candidate's tournament. In such a tournament, where eight players of about the same level compete with each other, I find it difficult to determine who it would be easiest to beat among them. And I think many of them will also focus on trying to beat me. I welcome such a challenge as it stimulates me. Karyakin sacrifices his queen against Caruana, but a little later he regrets this decision. He could have beaten Caruana. The game between Aronian and Nakamura is heading for a draw, but Nakamura makes a mistake. The American Grandmaster grabs his king. It's the wrong piece to move. The touch move rule in chess specifies if you touch a piece during your turn, then you must move it. But moving the king leads to a loss. There, there are always are going to be ups and downs, but I've had some rather uh, rather serious downward trends or tournaments, and, and it's always just the ability to come back and recover, and I, I tend to do that pretty well. After his error and defeat, Nakamura is too upset to attend the press conference. Levon Aronian is now tied for the lead. Hikaru Nakamura, the American, has had some major successes in his career. He beat Aronian to become world champion of Fischer Random Chess. In 2011, Nakamura won the Tata Steel Tournament, finishing ahead of Carlsen, Anand, Aronian and Kramnik. Though Nakamura is ranked sixth in the world, he's considered by some as the best. Um, the, the only way you can get an advantage is, is to play everything and surprise your opponents, and so that's, that's a large part of why I play uh, a bit of everything in all sorts of styles. The audience awaits the start of the seventh round. The game between the co-leaders, Aronian and Karyakin, may be critical. Despite the stakes, the two players are friendly. At one point, Aronian even leaves to bring a cup of tea to Karyakin as he contemplates his next move. The game is drawn. The game between Giri and Anand is also drawn. It's Giri's seventh consecutive draw. He loses very rarely, uh, but uh, the draws he... There was uh, in uh, this tournament by him uh, were all fighting, so it was not like, uh, ah, you know, just boring uh, draw and uh, he always makes draws. It's just... Uh, uh, depends uh, how the game will go. I think that he plays uh, quite actively uh, when it's necessary. He's uh, very aggressive. Of course, it would be nice to win uh, one game, but uh, so far I, did, I don't think that he had a real chance to uh, score. Anish Giri was born in St. Petersburg. He lived in Japan before his family settled in the Netherlands. Giri is very reserved and very ambitious. Giri, 21, and his wife, Sopiko Guramishvili, a female grandmaster, are the highest ranked family in the chess world. Giri makes fewer mistakes than anyone else in the world's chess elite. well prepared but uh, so are many of my opponents and I, I could say I'm a good defender but once again um, 
the same as uh, with Sergey Kalerekin and Fabiana Caruana. I think, uh, yeah, on a, on a good day, I'm, uh, I'm practically unbeatable, but I also can pose a lot of uh, problems to, to my opponents. But um, once again, it really depends on the day. Bad luck pursues Topalov. He suffers his fourth defeat in the seventh round. This time he loses to Nakamura. As if he has programmed himself a failure, Topalov says a young player is the only one who has a chance to defeat Carlson. I'm just waiting for the end of uh, this event. Uh, so I don't think I, I can improve much. I really would like to see the match between young players. Uh, like, let's say, Fabiano or um, Karyakin, Levon is uh, young. I would uh, see the clash between Magnus and his generation. So let's see how they will do. <laughs> Sopiko Gurumashvili probably doesn't know her forecast will come true. The eighth round. American versus American. Caruana wins. Nakamura is left with no chance of winning the tournament. The number of possible candidates to fight against Carlson has been narrowed to six. There should be some pressure. I should have some thoughts. I've really never had that chance because I, I lost a game very early and I, I never was uh, amongst the leaders. Fabiano Caruana has studied under five Russian-speaking coaches. For years, he lived in Europe and played for Italy. But in 2015, he switched to the United States. Ranked number three in the world, he's known for his incredible calculating ability, accuracy and fearlessness. You know, I, I actually thought before the tournament that uh that some of the main contenders would be uh, Karyakin and Doronian and Nakamura um, and Vichy. Uh, but I mean, it's really hard to say who, who is going to, to show their best chess. So. Carlson's pre tournament prediction has turned out to be pretty accurate. At the end of the seventh round, halfway through the tournament, Karyakin and Aronian are the leaders. A new round starts with an amusing incident. A white bishop is missing from one of the boards. It turns out that Anish Giri pocketed it. Giri, trying to break his streak of draws, plays aggressively in his match with Caruana. But the seven-hour game ends in another draw. In the same round, Anand defeats Aronyan. The Indian is again in second place, trailing Karyakin by just half a point. Levon Aranyan. He's known for his risk-taking on the chessboard. He is ranked in the top 10 and is considered one of the favorites. He played well against other tournament participants and against Carlsen. Aranyan will be a hard nut to crack for the world champion. So this was the... This was the moment I realized that uh, the trouble is just starting. <laughs> Fabiana Caruana plays against yesterday's winner Vichy Anand and beats him. Now he is even with the Indian Grandmaster. Anand looks discouraged during the press conference after the round. I feel pretty good. I always feel pretty good after a win and uh, in general the last couple of days I've, I've felt very good. Moscow has become the chess capital of the world during these days. Hundreds of amateur players watch the tournament at the newly opened Russian Chess House. A 15-minute walk from the Central Telegraph. These are young Muscovites, attracted by the new fashion in town, chess. 
The 11th round brought two significant victories and two important defeats. Peter Svidler seals the first victory of the tournament. Aranyan miscalculated while playing white and has lost the advantage. Karyakin is still in the lead, but Anand and Caruana are trailing by just half a point. It was a very difficult match for me against Vishy because, because, because I have never won against him in a classical chess before this tournament, but after I won my my, my first game against him, I was very happy, of course, but then, then unfortunately, I lost second, but, but it's, it's, it's chess, it, it is always fight, and uh, so it was normal, two, two, two interesting games, so it's okay. rounds left. Any decisive game can dramatically change the balance of power. Anand, Karyakin and Karuana are in the leading group. However, Aronyan, Svidler and the King of Draws, Anish Giri, still have chances of snatching victory. The 25th of March, the 12th round. Karyakin beats Tapalov. Anand loses to Nakamura. Karyakin is leading. I had a liking for Karyakin. I think he could have won a long time ago, but things aren't working out the right way. But I want to believe that he will achieve his dream here. penultimate round. Hikaru Nakamura improves his position in the standings by beating Tapalov. Anish Giri draws again. His 13th consecutive draw. Yeah, it's unusual and bad. Uh, but it's not that uh, I'm trying to, to do it this way. It's just uh, I'm missing a lot of chances and uh, yeah, unfortunately I cannot win a single one. This draw makes little or no difference for the young grandmaster. However, it means that Vishyanan will finish in third place. Karyakin and Aranyan settled with a draw. Everything will be determined tomorrow when Karyakin and Karuana play against each other. But Karuana still has a chance to beat Svidler and come within a half a point advantage. I think, I think he's basically one, one of the strongest players in, in, in the world. Svidler is not losing to the American. Karyakin and Karuana come to the final round level. streaming of the candidates on the internet broke records. The World Chess website was visited daily by a million users. Spectator interest reaches its peak on the final day of the tournament, when the winner is determined. Karyakin goes for a risky, unequal trade-off. He gives a rook for a bishop. However, on his 42nd move, Fabiano Caruana admits defeat. happiest person in the world uh, at this moment. I'm looking forward to, to, the, to, the, to the match, uh, but first I want to celebrate the, the win. <laughs> As a Russian and a Crimean, I'll be very glad to participate in the World Cup match and to represent Russia and Crimea. And that's what 
what sport is about and what, that's what kind of chess is about. So we love the drama. And uh, now, as soon as this event is over, we're looking forward to New York. At the closing ceremony, all the players seem tired, relieved and happy. Is victory written on the face of the winner? Perhaps. In the end, what separates him from the rest? Was it better preparation? Steadier nerves? If the players had the answer, they would do the same thing over and over again. Instead, the winner smiles and the rest shrug their shoulders and look forward to their next opportunity to fight for first place and strive once again for the World Championship.